Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt. Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas joins me. Good morning, Senator. Welcome back. A grim day as the Iranians have killed three American troops. Um, Sergeant William Jerome Rivers of Carrollton, Georgia, Specialist Kennedy Landon Sanders of Waycross, Georgia, and Specialist Brianna Alexandria Moffat of Savannah, Georgia. How should the United States respond, Senator? It is grim indeed, Hugh. My condolences go out to the families uh, and the loved ones of those three brave soldiers who were killed and the many dozens who were injured, Hugh. Um, and I think there's several of those still in critical condition today. Uh, may God uh, heal them all and get them back to their battle buddies and their families promptly. Um, Hugh, the only way to respond specifically to this attack is massive and devastating military retaliation against Iran's terrorist force forces throughout the region and in Iran itself. Only then will Iran realize that killing an American is an absolute red line that they can never cross again. Remember, Donald Trump in 2020 killed their terrorist mastermind, Qasem Soleimani, for targeting Americans just a few weeks earlier. In 1988, Ronald Reagan sank half of Iran's Navy for mining the Persian Gulf, which didn't result in dead Americans, simply a damaged naval vessel and injured sailors. Unfortunately, this is the result of eight years of failed policy from Barack Obama and his understudy, Joe Biden. Or, I'm sorry, 11 years, eight years under Barack Obama and three years under Joe Biden. Um, they have viewed Iran as a normal nation that has legitimate grievances against America. And if we would simply conciliate with them and appease them and grant them one-sided concessions, and Iran would pull in its horns, uh, begin behaving like a normal nation, and everything would be wonderful again in, in the Middle East. That's not the case. Iran has been a unappeasable enemy of the United States for 45 years. One of the first actions of the Ayatollahs was to take Americans hostage, hostage in our own embassy and hold them hostage for more than a year. We have to totally reverse the failed Obama-Biden policy of 11 years and view Iran as what it is, an evil enemy that cannot be placated, that can only, in the long run, be defeated. That should be the policy of the United States. Senator Cotton, Elliot Cohen uh, wrote this morning, and it's quoted in news items. I want to read it to you. A different Iran policy would begin by making it clear that the United States was breaking with the failed approach of the past, that it understood Iran's implacable hostility and would henceforth act on the premise that the Iranian regime can never be conciliated. The United States would be characterized by vigorous covert as well as overt support for the strong currents in Iran that oppose the regime and periodically erupt in protest against it. It would respond to attacks by Iranian proxies on the United States and its allies with massive, disproportionate, and above all, lethal attacks. Above all, it would be and appear just as implacable towards Iran as Iran's leaders are towards the United States. In the absence of such a policy, Iran will go stronger and more malevolent, not less. Iran will expand and escalate war in the Middle East and beyond. Changing American policy is not a good choice but it is the best choice before the administration. Do you agree? Well, Hugh, I think it is a good choice to change American policy for the reasons I outlined. For 45 years, Iran has been implacably hostile to America. And 11 years of failed appeasement and conciliation by Barack Obama and Joe Biden has only emboldened Iran and invited more aggression. I know that many people like to cite him now, I think, over 160 strikes against American positions by Iran's proxy since the October 7th atrocity in Israel. Don't forget that there were almost 100 strikes against our positions before the October 7th atrocity, You since Joe Biden took office. And how many times had we responded? Something like four or five. That kind of weakness simply invites more aggression. Yet you still see the president and his mouthpieces at the White House podium or on background newspapers saying, like, well, we, we want to be measured. We have to be proportionate. We, we are afraid that we might see escalation. What we saw over the weekend, he was escalation, Iran killing Americans. And there has to be massive consequences for that. And we should never be proportionate when an enemy attacks America. I agree with that. We should, be, we should be overwhelmingly disproportionate. And that, that, in fact, deters. This is cut number 10, Senator Cotton, a montage of Vice President Harris, Secretary Blinken, and two Joe Bidens in the aftermath of 10-7, 
talking to Iran. Cut number 10. And what's the message to Iran? Don't. It was very important to send a very clear message to anyone who might seek to take advantage of the conflict in Gaza to threaten our personnel uh, here or anywhere else in the region. Don't do it. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. Don't, don't, don't. (laughs) I've already delivered the message to Iran. They know not to do anything. They know not to do anything. Obviously not, Senator. Uh, How would you improve the messaging of the White House? Well, well, Hugh, I mean, Joe Biden is weak and pathetic and cowardly. You don't deter people like the Ayatollahs who govern Iran by going on TV and saying, don't, 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 don't. You do it by holding at risk and ultimately destroying or killing the things and the people they hold most dear, like the Revolutionary Guard shock troops. I'm confident that the Ayatollahs saw those videos and were laughing at Joe Biden. And every time, Hugh, every time since he took office, and especially since October 7th, when one of these militias in Iraq or Syria or rebel outlaws in Yemen shoot rockets and missiles at us, and we do nothing, or even if we only shoot back at those militias, again, Iran is laughing at us and high-fiving because they've had a decades-long strategy of using proxies throughout the Middle East to attack us so they can deny that it was them. And what do we do when we only attack Iranian proxy to you? We validate their proxy strategy. They look at that and say it's going great for us. Because as the saying goes, Hugh, Iran is very willing to fight to the last Arab against the United States. They don't Tell me about, about the target list, Senator. I've talked about the oil refineries, which has been much discussed over many years because that would cripple their economy. Ambassador Haley said minutes ago on this program, first step is put the sanctions back in place. Other people like David Drucker suggest hit the drone factories. They're all inside of Iran, though. They go after Iran. I'm not in favor of hitting more IRGC camps because that's, as you said, they'll fight to the last Arab. Yeah, so, so Hugh, there's no shortage of targets that we could take out that would send a message to the Ayatollahs. We certainly should target all IRGC camps and boats or ships um, and bases. But there's also other targets that would put immense pressure on Iran. For instance, you mentioned, as has often been mentioned, their refineries, because that is a massive bottleneck in the Iranian economy. One also that is controlled in no small part by the people that run the IRGC, who, all, who are also getting rich off of killing Americans. But there can be no doubt that America will not tolerate Iran or its proxies killing Americans or even targeting Americans anymore. There's a simple test here, Hugh, for what happens. Do the attacks stop? If they don't stop, then Joe Biden has once again failed. He has proven himself of being unworthy of being commander-in-chief for those young men and women that are in the Middle East, frankly, like sitting ducks, because he will not take the actions necessary, because he is cowardly, he is fearful. He broadcasts his fear all the time. And right now, he's starting to introduce his own reelection calculations into the lives of Americans in the Middle East, which is outrageous. Senator Cotton, let me ask you about the, the election calculations. It appears to me that Joe Biden is backing up on support for Israel. It appears to me that CIA Director Burns and Tony Blinken and others are sending one message and one message only quit Israel. Is that how you read it? Oh, there's no question, Hugh, that he's backing up. He's been backing up almost since uh, the days right after the strike. But now he's doing it increasingly publicly. You saw stories over the weekend leaked from White House officials that they're now thinking about withholding ammunition and shells from uh, Israel to put pressure on them to stop their war in, uh, of survival against Hamas. There even was apparently talk of withholding defensive weapons, things like interceptors for air uh, defense systems that, it, that protect Israelis sitting in major cities like Tel Aviv and Haifa. These things didn't just happen to you. This is a concerted effort by the administration to put out stories that puts pressure on the government of Israel to halt its war of survival against the brutal, the brutal terrorists that committed the October 7th atrocities. And again, why is he doing that? For two main reasons. First, his party has bought into this 
crazed worldview that somehow Israel are oppressive settlers, colonialists in their own biblical homeland. And second, he's worried about what it means for his reelection. If young progressive or Arab American voters sour on Joe Biden's very tepid support for Israel because they want no support for Israel um, and what it means for him to win in states like Michigan or Pennsylvania or Ohio. Do you think Donald Trump can win Michigan? Absolutely. He won it uh, in 2016. There's no question he can win it again. I mean, when you look at the, um, the embarrassment, embarrassment and, and humiliation that America has suffered under Joe Biden, the runaway inflation, the, the lack of, of job growth in working class jobs in places like Michigan, our wide open southern border that is letting, yes, terrorists from places like Somalia come across the border and just wander around freely until they get arrested on unrelated charges. There's no question that Joe, that uh, Donald Trump can win this year. Last question, Senator. I have a piece at Fox News today. No border, no deal. Do you agree with me? No border wall, no deal. Well, as we've discussed to you, the border wall is, a, is the visible commitment of an invisible conviction or principle that we will not tolerate illegal immigration. It is a necessary, though not a sufficient, uh, part of finally securing our border. So we do need to finish the border wall. Of course, we also have, have to have the other reforms we've discussed in the past, like reforming our asylum process, putting it into President Biden's abuses of the parole system. Now, that, that said, all these abuses are, are things that he could simply reverse. He does not, as he said, need this bill to pass. He wants this bill to pass because he knows that he'll, he may be able to disregard many of its key provisions or those provisions may be weak. And then he can say, like, I did what Republicans wanted. This is what they blessed at the border. Why? They can't pay me against me. Joe Biden could stop the slow motion invasion that he himself set in motion three years ago by himself today if he wanted to. Senator Tom Cotton, always good to talk to you. Thank you, Senator.